This video is for learning outcome three, and this is 3.4, looking at the impact of external factors on product development. So what are external factors? External factors are things that are not in your control. So as your business, it's not in your hands. Essentially, it refers to things that are going on in the outside world. The biggest example in our lifetime to affect business is COVID-19 restrictions. So the three external factors that we need to consider are technological developments, economic issues and legal issues. Starting with technological developments, basically as time progresses, more modern and efficient manufacturing methods become available and different materials that we can use to manufacture products. So with these different techniques, it allows us to save money in the production costs, but also you're going to need to adjust and you're going to need to buy new machinery. So businesses can use automated methods for production and they could bring in robots and machines to do the work. So this can result in less waste, less costs and more consistency over time. Furthermore, customers have different expectations for products and they're going to want more comfort and convenience as time goes on. The way the products are purchased has also changed with people using online and NFC services to order and pay. So when we are talking about economic issues, we are referring to the economy. Now the economy usually refers to the production and consumption of goods and services within one country. It's important for businesses to understand the economic climate, which is a significant factor in how well the business will perform. The economic climate is often expressed in terms of the business cycle. So when we look at the business cycle, it usually follows a trend like shown in the graph here, and we'll have different times where there is a recession, some growth, a boom and a decline. Now, looking at this line on the graph, we can see that any time the graph starts to go up, any time there is economic growth, it's shown by a rise in the graph. So any time the line goes up, we are looking at some growth when it reaches like a real high when it's like a significant increase of real growth we can refer to it as a boom when it reaches any sort of real slump so when it reaches like the bottom type of thing here it is called a recession we can see again there's another boom because it's gone to a real high again and here, whenever there is a downward turn on the graph, it is called a decline. So you can really notice that the arrow is pointing to the line itself as it's on a downward slope. It's called a decline. When it's on an upward slope, it's a growth. When it kind of reaches the top, when it's like at the highest, it's called a boom. And when it reaches a real slump at the bottom, it's called a recession. So when we're talking about the economic climate, it's looking at where is the country's economic growth on this graph. If we're currently in a recession, then it's going to be difficult to do well as a business. So when we look at the business cycle, we have to think about what the impact might be at these different stages. So when we're looking at a recession stage, the kind of events that come around that are that customers spending starts to fall. If you're in a recession, lots of people are struggling financially and they will spend less money than usual. The business profits are more than likely going to be falling as well. And the business is probably lacking confidence in itself. So the effect of that, the impact is going to be that you're probably going to make less investment into new products. You're not going to see that as a priority. Your priority is going to be survival. When we are in growth, customers are going to be buying more stuff. They're going to, you're going to be making more products and you're probably going to invest more money because you're in a growth. 
the effect or the impact of that is going to be that your business starts developing new products to basically cover the costs that you that you're spending your money on when we have a boom that's when everything is like really really good customer spending is very high you might actually be running out of stock prices mean sorry the prices might increase meaning that you're going to make higher profits so if your products are in real high demand that's a good time for you to increase profits by making the prices higher and then the impact and the effect of that is that you know you could have some product development mainly improving your existing products or creating more of your stock when you're on a bit of a downward slope into a decline customer spending is going to be a bit low businesses are going to start to make some losses and the impact of that is that you're going to focus on survival you're going to basically allocate very very low funds for making any sort of new products so when it comes to legal issues there are three different areas that we need to think about as a business you need to comply with all of the legislation or you're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble so legal issues cover all obvious safety standards to make sure that your product is safe and people are not going to get harmed by using them. But we also need to think about employment law, consumer protection law and competition law. And underneath each of those different sections, there are different laws that you might need to know. The exam board is a little bit unclear on this as to which specific laws to focus on. So I'm just going to give a bit of an overview of the type of things that you might need to know. So start with employment law. There's lots of different laws that come into place for you as a business. You need to be aware of because you need to follow them to make sure that your employees are safe and protected. The most obvious one is the Health and Safety at Work Act. And this has been around since the early 1970s. And that is to make sure that all your workers are safe. Their health is not affected by the job. So that's going to need, mean that you have to make sure a lot of stuff is in place in your actual workplace. Make sure that they have protective clothing, protective gear if they need it. Make sure that they get regular breaks and things like that. Then we've got things like Race Relations Act, which means that it's illegal to discriminate against anybody. And the same with sex discrimination makes it illegal to discriminate against a different sex. And they have quite significant impacts on a business. Consumer protection laws are brought in to protect the actual customer. So you need to be aware of these laws as a business to make sure that you are being sensible. So it's all well and good producing loads of products for really cheap and making loads of profits. But if those products are not safe or they're defective, you're going to end up losing a lot of money and reputation. The Consumer Rights Act means that people can return items within 30 days if they are unhappy if they don't think that it meets a certain quality if it's not fit for purpose or if you haven't described it accurately in your advertising a customer can return it and get a full refund the consumer protection act is basically protecting people's safety so if anybody gets injured or harmed by one of your products they are well within their rights to return the item but also sue you for damage death or personal injury finally we have competition law now these are the most obvious and the most common ones to pop up for exam questions competition law is basically to stop people stealing others intellectual property so you can't just look at a particular device and copy it like for like because you are breaking the law. Copyright Designs and Patents Act protects the legal ownership of the creator. So this is broken down into four sections. We've got the copyright section, trademark, a registered design and a patent. How they are obtained differs. So with copyright, we have automatic copyright protection. So anything that you create you automatically have copyright protection as long as you can prove that you created it. 
Things that are covered by that are music, film, text and artwork. When it comes to a trademark, you need to apply for a trademark. And this is to cover things like brand names, logos and jingles. It's to stop other people copying your style. With a registered design, you need to apply for this one as well. And it's for things like the appearance, packaging, colours and patterns that might apply to a product. With a patent, that is something you need to apply for and it covers things like inventions and new techniques and technologies. Each of these are all part of this one piece of legislation that's like 230 pages long when you actually look at the law. Now this is a really, really important piece of legislation that you need to be aware of as a business because it can really come back and hurt you if you don't follow this. So that is all of 3.4 covered. If you have any questions, send me an email and I'll get back to you.